Yo, what is up YouTube and welcome to today's video. Now, today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be going in depth on one fundamental that I use every single game. And it's something that's not spoken enough about and it's pressing tab. Very simple, but there is so much information and so many things that you can get out of pressing tab. And in this video, I want to go a little bit more in depth on all the things that I use tab for, how you can track so many things, which leads to all of your decisions in the game, and ultimately help you guys ingrain a new habit and structurize your gameplay. If you want to learn all about the fundamentals, you can check out my course in the description below. And other than that, I hope you guys really enjoy this video, learn something new, use it to structure your gameplay, and I wish you all an amazing remainder of your day. See you guys! Stay blessed. Every move you made, I was watching you. If you are serious about improving and climbing to your desired league rank, you're in the right place. I've worked on laying out two courses that will help you in all aspects to improve. One is about all the fundamentals for the landing phase, and the other one goes in-depth on tempo and the mid to late. I've been challenger for seven years and I can guarantee you that this will massively speed up your process and reaching any goal that you have set in mind. Both courses have a preview video where you can see the style of the videos, so check those out before anything. You can also always join my Discord to check out some reviews. Alright, let's get into the video. Today is going to be a very different video to what I usually do. I'm going to be recording a full game and showcasing one of the most important fundamentals that I'm basically utilizing every game. Alright, so I'm playing against a Yorick. Gotta quickly switch my runes to play against the Yorick. I think this will do. And that's all good. Now, fundamentals, of course, are kind of broad because there's so many basic, there's so many important skill sets to League of Legends. But one of the most important fundamentals, and it's something that not a lot of people talk about, I barely hear any talk about it honestly is pressing tab because there is simply there's so much information that you can get from pressing tab and that information can lead to your decisions in the game permanently the decisions you make in lane certain trades that you make where you open up in side lane if you should be grouping for baron a lot of these things are completely dependent on the information that you gather from pressing tab my goal this game is to lead you guys through everything that i see when pressing tab the stuff that i pay attention to and how that also leads to the decisions that i be making in the game now i am playing in this mmr to showcase you guys that just pressing tab and constantly thinking about those stuffs so i can basically ingrain the same type of habits into your brain that is the idea you guys always hear me yapping about fundamentals now throughout both of my courses i also explain the importance of pressing tab and i showcase uh, multiple examples but in this game i just want to have a game example where i can show you guys where some of these thoughts would play into mind and i can showcase you guys that by tracking cs tracking items all this stuff i can make my decisions on the map more accordingly and you guys can learn from it too heading into the game here i'm going to turn the sound a little bit lower and i'm just going to go for a d shoot against yorick the first thing we always do when pressing tab is checking the setup he has conqueror resolve that's information we get by pressing tab right and again go cp so no flash interesting to know that makes it so if i ever get on top of him he has no way to flash away so we're gonna keep that in mind another thing to note is that this guy is playing with sorcery not entirely sure what's in there and then similarly my jungler has a flash as well there could be briars that play with ignite or go sometimes as well but we know he's playing with flash so i also know how to kind of anticipate some of these fights the first habit is to always stay hydrated. No, the first habit, guys, is I, once my opponent comes to the lane, the first thing I do every single game, literally every game, is press tab and check a starting item. If he has a D shoot, he has more sustain, less damage. He has a, if he has a D blade, he's a more aggressive setup, right? Then the second thing I always want to do, and you guys know this, is I want to get a early ward down on the enemy buff or the golems in this instance i'm gonna get the buff down because i'm assuming warwick will start on the buff he doesn't really start raptors or something like this and like i said we're gonna go into lane and the first thing i want to do is press tab okay we saw the orc i have no idea where we seen, but he has a d shoot so that already kind of changes my mentality in this matchup i know he doesn't do as much damage as he would with d blade but he also has a little bit more sustain second thing i'll do is i'll permanently keep track of the cs of my jungler and enemy jungler so i kind of know what camps they have done what speed they're doing every camp in the game gets four cs by counting cs uh, we can kind of see what our opponents are doing so it looks like bojar is a path into top because warwick did not show on the rep off yet Briar's passing to the top as well. You see here, Briar has 4 CS from taking the rep off. He'll have 8 CS after taking Golems. We got his bone plating out. And I'm just gonna look for my level up timer here in a second. If I can, I'll just queue him. And this will give him my level up, even though it's only 6 minions. Alright, nothing too special here in the early game. I'm gonna get his goose away. But he did not land his E, so he can't really fight me. Oh, I'm gonna lose the melee here. Still haven't seen the Warwick. Auto QE. Get a good trade in here. And I like that trade a lot. Thin out the wave a little bit. Gotta get rid of these guys. And you see here, my Briar has 9 CS now. She's taking one small Raptor. And this guy used his potion. Keep check of that, of course, as well. I see that he's 11 CS, so he's been farming pretty good here. And I know that two melees right here is gonna hit him level 3. 
So there it is. And I'm going to thin out this caster. I get my level 3 as well. Beautiful. Now, this ward is going to disappear. I still haven't seen Warwick. But assume that the Warwick is mirroring the pathing of uh, Briar, but opposite, right? Like, Briar is from red buff into blue buff. And my or the Warwick is part from blue buff into red buff. Okay, there is this thingy. I see that he has 170 mana left, so not that much. His W costs 70 mana. I know that now because I played some Yorick. I'm going to W here to already dodge the damage. And alt Q. Beautiful. Now, I know he has TP, right? No flash. So, soon we could maybe dive onto him. But one thing I gotta keep in mind is from these two mains right here. And that melee, he gets his level 4. So, I want to maybe zone him a little bit from the XP. Oh, that's a lucky timing. Warwick is pathing into top. We know that from our early game ward. And we didn't see him on this buff. The second I see Warwick on the map now, guys, I need to press tab to see how much farm he has. To see if he's level 4. Remember, this guy's no flash. I'm assuming Warwick is topside right now. So, I'm anticipating a gank. There he is. 24 CS. So, that means he's done all 6 camps. And that also makes him level before. I'm instantly going to move. I know he has flesh, right? But I know he instantly full clicked. Also, his rep buff is still there. That, of course, means he paths a blue buff into rep buff. And there's his flesh. I'm going to focus on the Yorick, who does not have flesh. I'm going to ignite him. He should ghost, but if he doesn't... Okay, that flesh was just bad. All right, never mind. It was good. I tried to at least get my Q off. You saw here, I saw Katarina on the map. The first thing I did instantly was press tab, and I saw that Katarina had an extra item, right? I also should have checked off my Echo, actually, before heading into the fight, because you see Echo had an extra item here, which is information that I could have gathered just by pressing tab in advance. It's super important to just have this happen. So let's say a skirmish happens there, right? But the Warwick actually recalled and had, like, an extra longsword or something like that. If you did not press tab before the skirmish happened, you could get really caught off guard. Okay, perfect. First thing, of course, we do when Yorick comes back into the lane is check his items. He bought a longsword and a boot. Nothing really changes here. He's trying to freeze the wave. I ain't having any of that. Get out of here. Now, another interesting question maybe is where's Warwick? Right? Ask yourself this. Where's Warwick right now? Obviously, both sides. Why is that? Because he path both into top. So I know right now there's not going to be Warwick. I wait for five minutes and boom, I can get the split. And how do I know that I can do this? Because I know Warwick path both into top. He is right here. Should be able to just get everything. And now I'm going to dip out. He should not have kill pressure onto me. He lost a lot of CS whilst doing so. The wave is going to push back, in, back into me because the means are there. Uh, talking about proxying, I'm working on updating both of my courses right now. And that will also be the next uh, subject that I'm going to be talking about, which is proxying. Okay, now here we see Warwick. You see he has 32 CS. So that means since the last time we saw him, he's taken two camps, right? He was 24, so he's taken two camps. I'd assume it would be Gromp and Wolves, but it could also be like Wolves, Raptors. But he's taken two, uh, two camps, and we see here that he has Boots and Tabbies. He has no flesh from earlier, but he's going to be a little bit tankier. Katarina's still on the same items. Yorick is here, but he should get level 6. I don't want to stay around too long. I'm just checking here. He did hit his level 6. So now I'm actually going to go here, and I'm a little bit scared because the Yorick is level 6. He's almost out of mana, though. And you see here constantly, the first thing I do before moving to a fight or before making my decision to fight, I check the Warwick's farm, I check his items, right? Because then I know if I should be fighting in general or not. Also, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is I check my Briar that he has two long shorts too. While checking enemy items, I should also check my jungler's item, right? Because let's say that my jungler hadn't recalled here. We should 100% of the times avoid the fights. What I was saying earlier is that, yeah, on the course, I'm going to be adding the uh, the proxy and some uh, some, some other um, subjects too, okay? The work is moving. 36, you got one more ca extra camp. But before moving here, it is better for me to just push out this wave simply because if it crashes into the turret of the Yorick here, afterwards it will bounce back. But it's limited. Yeah, I gotta be a little bit careful. Okay, they killed the Katarina. That's really good news. And I want to try and get this Maiden down to 1 HP if I can. If you kill the Maiden or, like, last it, you get 50 gold. So that's amazing here. Thank you for the 50 gold, baby. All right, uh, slow push this, hard push next. I'm going to get my level 7. I'm going to have my Ignite back too, so if he walks up a little bit too far, I can kill him, okay? All right. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, you cannot walk up that far, right? Old Ignite, very simple combo, yet no mana too. I get the work passive. 36, yes, he should have one more camp in his top side. Oh, no, he's both. He's showing both. 36. You see, he's his next recall. And the reason why it's interesting to see that this work has recalled this again is because now I know that, it, like, after this bot gank, he is not going to recall again. He's going to farm and instantly come into topside instead of, like, maybe ganking both recalling and making different decisions, right? I know that because he's already recalled. Okay, first thing we'll do when Yoda comes back is check his items. I'm gonna go for Trinity Force. And the reason I go for Trinity Force is because they have a full melee topside, right? So melee, melee, melee. Trinity Force is best. Like, if you're wearing a straight, you go Stripe Breaker. Uh, they're pretty of armor so armor here tabby's here 
Yorick hasn't really shown anything yet. Uh, this guy seems to be going for Lich Pim, right? This is already some items that I can do. And an interesting part about checking items this early in the game is that you can already start considering how you want to itemize against them. Now, for Garrett, it doesn't change, but there's a lot of champions that would make or that those decisions would have impact. Uh, and another thing to consider, of course, while uh, checking this out is I can I can know right now if I should be taking skirmishes in general or not. Like, looking at the Katarina being 0 to 1 doesn't tell me that much. Looking at the item tells me a lot more, right? Briar still hasn't reset. That's also an interesting part. Remember the last time we were fighting at the Grubs? Since then, this Briar has not recalled. So I know that right now, my Briar is bot side, but she also has to recall before she's going to be doing anything on the map. At least that's what she should do, right? She's sitting on like 1.5k gold, something like this. How do I know that? It's because, give or take, the last time we saw the Briar, it was like here, and she hasn't recalled since. So, and I believe she got a kill as well, or an assist. So that means she should be sitting around 1.5k gold. And what we'll do is after this game, I'll go to the replay and show you guys how much gold the Briar had just to kind of see it. But I know this simply because I'm pressing tab and keeping track of the game. When I'm super focused, I just about know how much gold everybody has in the game, or at least I know the last time when they reset. So I can kind of make my decisions regarding their resets. I should be a little bit less greedy here, but we do have four plates. Okay, work is bot. Still the same items, 50 CCS this time, and he's level six, but nothing we have to be worried of. My guy is back in 30. They're fighting here, but they should win. I'm gonna punish him here. I got my W2. All right. And he spawned the Maiden. I'm gonna be a little careful. Spawns extra homies. But if I can hit the Maiden, I will. Oh, okay. So Vayne is 4-1. That is their win condition right now. How do I know win conditions? Passing tab, right? Every time I see tab, I know who their win condition is. I know who their strongest member is. I keep pressing tab, so I know what to expect in this game. The work is still 0-2, so that work is still super weak. Still same items, has a tabbies. Now my Briar has a full Eclipse, right? So she was sitting on quite a lot of gold. She got a reset in, and she's back into topside. So now I know that my Briar is super strong if we were to skirmish. Bit out his W. Beautiful. I can't really contest this wave, though. Work is mid. Took Dragon into instantly mid. And there's a blue buff, so I move my camera to verify that too. They're fighting, but my team should win the 2v2 because look at the echo items, right? And the Briar is a full eclipse. I believe this guy's TP, so if he does not TP, I just get the full turret. Okay, um, I think my best play is to stay until I have 1.5k gold. I could move here. Okay, I know Warwick still has not recalled. Katarina might look to go for an extra wave. Okay, now I don't want to I don't want to stay too long because this guy has a uh, maiden and the goose So he'll push my turret super fast if I leave him alone in top lane So even though Katarina does get to crash the wave here I don't really think I had kill pressure anyways I'm down to fight this because even though Warwick might have everything and Briar does not have ult My Briar has way better items, so I am super down to fight this even if the Warwick were to counter gank this Right, and how do I know? Press it that baby. All right, keep checking CS every time the Warwick shows keep checking items and here, I actually would prefer to push because I can get the full turret. So for me, it is 10 times more worth to look to get this full turret than looking for that to help the Briar here. It's the first turret in the game. Give 600 gold, equivalent to two kills. Why would I help the Briar here if I can secure myself full items? And this work is way weaker. I don't, the Briar doesn't need my help. The, the Briar just beats the work because of item gap. Unless she just gets outplayed, I guess. I think they're both outplaying each other. That was a good kill by him, though. I think I can kill him. And no, 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 you guys didn't see that, you guys didn't see that. You guys didn't see nothing. And he's out. All right, you're out, buddy. Oh, I still know that going for the turret is the correct call there. Flushing after him was uh, a little bit uh, whimsical. All right, we're gonna buy this. Do not look at my flush. Seems to be a trend where me fl and flushing on Garen is a very interesting thing. Now, I'm going to open up into top site. I don't want to really lane into Vayne, but here's a very interesting thing, okay? So press tap here. Ezreal's turn two, Vayne is four and one. But my Ezra is still infinitely stronger because look at the difference in the CS, right? 40 CS up. I'm also a lot of CS up. Pretty surprised that the Briar lost to the Warwick. But it's probably the difference in ultimate and maybe the lethal tempo. But I think the Briar also misplayed her abilities. Or she had like used her W on, on the on the grubs already. And that's why she lost the, uh, the 1v1. Because I feel like the Briar should out. That check that. And I'm gonna hard push next wave. And then I'll move to my teammate. Vayne has a full item. Katarina has a full item. So I know that they are on their spikes too. Alright, so we're very close to level 11. I'm gonna be moving here. Oh, may or may not have sacrificed them. I think this guy's gonna flame me. They got shoveled. I mean, I do believe we're still much stronger here. Where's the cat? Oh, okay, maybe not. My Q removed the slow of the Yorick E, which is an interesting uh, mechanic, right? I don't know, people really, really, really like these grubs. I'm moving here, though. My Echo is ult, I see it here. Katarina has a full item, but not enough to defend against Justice. I W here for the... 
damage reduction. The Warwick is still only on Tabi Longsword. Remember when the Warwick ganked bot like the last time here and died to the Zoe? That's like five minutes ago, right? He still just has Tabi's Longsword. So I'm not scared of this Warwick at all because he's had these items for like five minutes already. So I know I don't have to be scared. You see, guys, all the fights that I take or the trades that I take are also dependent on the items that people have. And how do I know what people uh, items people have? It's them, of course. You are a pig, by the way. I'm upset. Come here, wife. Bad wife. You used to serve me. I see you found another man. Anyways, our guy is coming back up. Work is going to come into top set. Let's just see how much items the work will have when coming back into top set, right? Like, he should be sitting on, like, 1.5k gold in terms of items. That he, uh, I should say. Look, he bought a full Tiamat and a Tunneler, so that's around 2k gold, actually, right? So yeah, I knew I could fight the Warwick there, because even though he was like, they, they were like somewhat strong, he's sitting on 2k gold, so I know he's like co completely weak compared to me when I had spent all my gold before the fight, right? And again, how do I know to take this fight? You press tab. Check his CS to hold a game 2, right? To kind of gouge how strong people are. They got the S rule. Okay, that's not very good. Uh oh. You saw the first thing I did then when seeing the Yorick? You see, it was an ingrained habit of mine. You guys should also strive to make this an ingrained habit. The first thing I did was when, when seeing the Yorick there, I instantly pressed items. I wasn't even talking about it. It's just an ingrained habit of mine. I instantly pressed that because I need to know how strong the Yorick is. He's going for a and Hydra and he bought Tabby. So right now they have Tabby's here, Tabby's here. And okay, so she had armor here. This gives me both anti-heal and armor penetration and extra kit when I already have Phantom Dancer. So that's my go-to next item. Here, I would personally prefer to skip the dragon because it's not worth as much. If I play for the tier 2 top instead, it can give me a lot more gold and put my position in the game way better. Plus, I win the sideline against Jorik as he has no ultimate right. Now I can dive him on the sideline. They killed the Vayne, which is amazing, because that guy was 5-1, and one, right? So that's shutting down that win condition. But my Ezreal is still way stronger because of the CS lead. So even though my Ezreal is 3-3 three and, three and Vayne was 5-1, and one, my bot lane is actually still stronger. Okay, well, my team is just winning there, so that makes the game a lot easier. I want to try and bait out this W, but I don't have to. I can just start hitting the turret too, and I use my W on his abilities. And now I need to get the gate. All right. Beautiful. On tab, you can see when these things are going to be spawning. So I see the blue ball spawning in 10 seconds. But this is very simple. You guys are utilizing that in your gameplay too. The most important things to keep checking throughout the game is people's farm, people's items, and knowing how much gold they are on, give or take, so that you can kind of understand which fight you should be taking, which fight you should be avoiding. Warwick is bot, so I want to start the Herald here. Yeah, I mean, I'm ultimately way stronger than the Yorick right now. He has not finished his first item. But I already have two, and I'm going towards my third. I want to get this Herald so that I can guarantee get the top tier two turret. Gotta make sure to last it, because if you last it, the Herald you get 150 gold instead of 50 gold but this is a little uh it's okay though keep checking items this warwick should have his full titanic now because he only needs 600 gold to finish his component his he has his full poof and hydra so now i know that at least on their spikes but we're still ahead on terms of spike right and i think okay now i got a flush he doesn't have his full item yet i still think i'm still probably dead though unless i dodge his ult i can dodge that did not expect four people topside. Maybe should have ignited. Uh, well played by them. Good roam. I, I honestly never expected four to be topside there. I worked and I have his full item. Who got my shutdown? Vayne did. That's pretty scary because that's uh, one person I don't want to get gold in their draft. I don't really mind the Katarina or Warwick or the Yorick for that uh, matter. It's just a Vayne that's the only threat to me. This is a weird scenario though because they're just not answering this at all. I just hope my team does not overstay. A very common uh, mistake you'd see around this MMR. Katarina jumped in 1v5 though, or 1v3 rather, but I mean, same thing. So they got me, and they've gotten the tier 1 top. It's a good trade by them, considering they have shutdowns on turrets, and they get the 1k on the vein. So I gotta be a little bit wary. And maybe I should have picked my team away, because they were clearly overstaying. After the tier 2, their play was over. And now it kind of puts my position on the map a little bit awkward too, because I want to play for the top tier 2. It gives me the most gold, right? And the tricky part is that if I do that, my teammates are dead right now, so they can send everybody top. Warwick, you see, like, this Warwick should have enough gold for his item already for, like, I I don't know how long but he's not recalling so i don't know you know if he's not recalling then he's playing on like half his strength playing with two components and a, and a, and a ruby crystal instead of finishing your item of course is super super inefficient vayne has got a blade rune king so that guy is a real threat to me now my champion is building a lot of health well not that much actually with my current build usually you'd be building more health but it's still very good to check the blade rune king still about this item and katarina still only on lich bane so i can one shot this guy because he still doesn't have his item there we go easy k 
mistake, right? How did I know that? Check his items. I'm gonna just run away. Vayne is probably coming top. They have sent four to me last time. But yeah, like, this is the second time. I just so am so confident in finding the Warwick because he's not buying stupid items every time. This is a mistake a lot of people make, by the way. My team is winning, so it's a little bit easier to choose my side on opponent, right? But if you look here, both I'm winning against both the Katarina and Yorick. But let's say I was winning against Yorick and losing against the Katarina. I would probably put myself against Yorick simply so that I'm able to win the side then, right? And how do I decide that? By checking items, checking levels, and stuff like this. Uh, Baron is in 15. So, in the general sense, or my general rule of thumb is I want to be opposite to the neutral objective, and I have my item in base, so I should go bot lane right here. The reason I go bot is, if you see here, this guy's playing with Ignite, right? If I push the wave all the way here, and then start moving on the map, and Katarina is receiving, I can create a 45 scenario here or here, right? Now, there's, of course, way more intricate ways to manage your sideways, but that's everything explained in a nutshell. I'm gonna ping them away, and I'm gonna ping that I go bot, and uh, it's still better for me to be bot than the Echo with TP, because I can pressure really hard. See, Warwick had this item and an extra Vamp Scepter, so he's been having enough gold to buy it for a while, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna keep pushing both here. Because even if I move to the fight right now, I feel like I'm already too late. Yeah, this guy has been sitting on his gold, I mean, plenty of times. I'm still very curious how much gold the Briar had. I said around 1500, so watch that after game two. Here's the Warwickus. I mean, he does have his item now, but I have anti-heal, so he might not anticipate my damage. And I crit him. Yeah, 2 HP! Suck! And just unlucky, just unlucky, just unlucky, just unlucky, just unlucky. I have not said chat once. I'm talking to the bros, the little Fire piggies on YouTube. And it's been refreshing to record some games off stream too. I really like it. But let's keep going. Okay, so Katarina has two items now. Yorick is still all just on one. Vayne is on two and she's going for either... I mean, I think Terminus, but maybe this is... No, this is not Terminus because the long shot doesn't belong there. So I'm not sure what she's building. My Briar has two items, my S has two and a half items, and my Echo soon has two. So even though I'm checking enemy items, Items, right i also have to check my items and also i should check my teammates summoners so the reason why it's so important to check my teammates items is to of course understand how strong they are but in a different game right i see leona here for example has flesh usually these type of supports have hacks flesh so now i know that leona has flesh but let's say i had like a rel rakan here or maybe like a rel jungle here it's so important to know if your jungler has flesh or not so that you know how they're going to engage a fight or let's say you'd have to peel for uh, for your ad carry but you press tap and you see that your ad carry does not have summoners you know you have to peel even like even better right so there's so much information here i know all my teammates have their summoners so this fight should be pretty free because we all have our summoners we're stronger than items only the vein is the person i have to shut down because she's seven and two or the katarina because she's two items and then this fight should be easy warwick is dead so we should oh wait what i pressed my w on her w what is going on well nonetheless work was dead so the fight should be super free i killed him with my e almost i'm still waiting for the cat no i mean there she is just this uh, okay. I hope the, the TED talk I was uh, having about, you know, pressing tab to see the summoners that your teammates have and their items, of course, allows you to understand who to target in a team fight or to defend and how the team fight will kind of play out. So I prepare my team fights. I would say 50% of a team fight is just preparation. Checking summoners before the fight, checking items before the fight on both your teammates and your enemy teammates, right? And then once you have all the information, you can make your decision on how you want to play out the fight. Do you want to peel your any carry? Do you want to shut down their main carry, right? You, you get all the opportunities. And that's all from preparation, more so than execution. Or again, 50% of the team fight is the preparation part. This still doesn't have a second item. This still doesn't have a second item. It's just the Katarina and the Vayne that are the strongest members. I'm very close to level 16. If I get that, then I can just absolutely one-shot anybody. My next item is probably Deadman's Plate. This is just the most consistent component, or item rather. They could be playing for Nash right now here. There's a Nash up, and I don't see them in mid lane. They could look for Ezreal. They could look for Nash. Mm, I want to one-shot the Vayne. I'm level 16 now, so it's going to be a uh, unfair... Uh... What's up, Piggy? Ooh, 700 crit. Katarina! Okay, done. The 500 crit is disgusting. This W is coming out. I'm gonna walk her in it. I can also push top and look for this. I don't think we can end through mid. It is generally speaking better to look for the sideline first. I think my teammates can do Nashi here without me, even though Briar is dead. Maybe they can because Briar is dead. I didn't even know Briar was dead, I'm gonna be honest. I'm talking too much. If we get Nash, should mean the game is end, or like we can close the game out after that. Work is alive in 10 seconds. Echo's gonna have to ult here. I'm gonna take over the aggro for. I'll give him a fist bump though. Vayne is still on two items, not towards a third. Warwick is going for Blade Room King as well, so that kind of incentivizes me to not build that much HP because they're having two Blade Room Kings this game, right? So they have health shred. My S is gonna have three items for sure after this recall. I'm still gonna build this even though it gives me HP because I feel like it is the best. And now let's go for another really quick blades. No HP, gives me a little bit more crit. I can watch it anybody. 
I like it. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I mean, York got a second item. Doesn't really change anything, of course, because I'm already at my fourth. Ezreal, like, we have no flush besides Briar, but Ezreal's getting his back pretty soon. I'm, I'm gonna be going bot lane. We already have mid and hip, and I hope my team goes top. So if they don't, I'm just gonna already ping them to go top and push for this. Whilst I'm gonna be pushing bot, I'd like to split push in this scenario so we can kind of play three lanes at the, at, at, uh, at the same time because mid is going to push by default. This guy's no flush, remember? So he's a dead little piggy. Wee buff Garen. I'm just gonna go for the inip. All right, should look like a kill. All right, NFF. What a matters, baby. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. The whole goal is to showcase how important it is to press tap, right? What do I look for when pressing tap? I check items. I can understand if I should avoid a fight or take a fight by checking tab and seeing um, uh, the amount of CS that he has. I am able to know where the jungler is at, so I know where the jungler is at. And then by checking his items, checking my teammates' items, I know how to take certain fights, like skirmishes around the map, 1v1, 2v2. I know if I'm stronger or not in terms of spike, but of course you need some item knowledge for this too, right? Then I know who I should be sidelining against, that's another part. And then lastly, I also know um how i should set up my team fight so pressing tap is an absolutely fundamental to inhabit into your gameplay remember how much i was yapping about gold in the game and the fact that i told you guys that i would just basically after the game showcase you what i was meaning so you have a better visualization of it because i was keeping track of it in the game whilst i was talking but here remember this scenario where warwick and briar did their full clear they reset and we're gonna play for the grubs right so you see here warwick and briar are on a little bit of gold they've been on the map for a bit but not too much and that was a skirmish here and this is what i mentioned right they killed the Warwick and the Katarina. I didn't know they killed both, but she also got Treasure Hunter, which is something I didn't account for. And then the Warwick had these items. So keep this in mind. Seven minutes into the game, Warwick has his... Um Tabis and his long sword, right? Which is what we were talking about during the game. So seven minutes. We, he's gonna show on the map right here. Here's where we see him. And he has these items. I remember when I said Briar is going to be full clearing into bot lane. I didn't say it here. I said it around here, right? When I'm walking back into lane and standing here, I said, okay, Briar right now, I shouldn't look for too many proactive things on top lane because my Briar is sitting on these two items and she needs to set up a reset first before she should do something proactive. So before Briar should like look for the bot lane gank or look to play for dragon, she should recall because I said, give or take, she's around 1500 gold. She was on 1.8k gold also because she got the kill on Warwick, not the assist. And Treasure Hunter, my tracking was correct, knowing that this Briar was sitting on a lot of gold. So I shouldn't look for too many proactive stuff in top lane because my jungle is here and he's going to recall, right? And also here, I already know my jungle is going to go into bot side because if you're Briar, after this move, where are you going to go? Well, there's three bot side camps. Obviously, she's going into bot side, right? So I know here, coming back into my lane, that I should play pretty reserved and not look for anything proactive. Now, the second part to this is remember that minute seven, we saw the Warwick with Tabis and a longsword. And if you recall from the game, I went for the skirmish right here. And remember why I felt so confident in the skirmish is because I, I spent all my gold. And I pressed tab here. And take a look at the timer in the game. It is six minutes later. Six full minutes. And they were fighting here. And I was like, wait a second. Look at Warwick's items. And look, he is on 2.2k gold. So, of course, the skirmish is super free. I was never afraid of this guy because all the gold that he has is in his inventory. He has more gold in his inventory than he has in items right now. And this is why it is such a core fundamental. Always press tap and keep track of items. Check the economy of people in the game. This is important for choosing your skirmishes, either avoiding them or, or confidently taking them because you're checking items. You see how strong people are, right? And this will require constant attention, but the more you ingrain this as a habit, the more natural it becomes for you. This allows you to decide when you should go to side lane, all right? And who you should open up into side lane with. And by this, you're able to track the tempo of your teammates because you should also be able to track how long they've stayed on the map for, like I showed you with the Briar. And you should also be able to track the tempo of your opponents with how long they are on the map for right so pressing tab is by far one of the most important fundamentals to have in your gameplay and if you want to teach or learn about all the other fundamentals that i explained in depth in this i highly recommend checking out both of my courses as they will genuinely help you so much with structuring your gameplay and they go way more in depth than, than, than we've gotten here because this is a live game example right i hope you guys learned something new from watching this video and you guys will start ingraining this as a habit making it an autopilot thing so basically how you should approach this right is every time you're in the game try to keep track of items try to manually take notes or, or mentally take notes and the more you do it you'll ingrain it as a habit you'll get better at it i hope you guys enjoyed the video yeah leave a comment down below if you'd like to see more of this content thank you all for your support and i wish you all amazing remainder of your day peace yeah, yeah.